according to Aisha Yusufu, for some of us to truly build a nation where peace and justice shall reign in fulfillment of the second stanza of our national anthem, we must work to ensure that Nigerians become a country where the son or daughter of a nobody becomes somebody without knowing anybody. The only thing holding us from achieving this is that we are all SARS. Young people raised about 25 million naira for protest, and protesters are testifying to the impact of the disbursed fund on food and medical supplies. Yet, the federal government allegedly disbursed 600 billion naira as COVID-19 palliative, and no single Nigeria benefited. Rotimi Idu, best graduate of OAU law class of 1990, said recently, leadership confers a responsibility to be above board. It's a calling, a calling to be different by whatever means possible. It could be by training, counsel, coaching, etc. If you cannot lead by example, do not accept leadership responsibility. Even if the whole society is bad and it is the pool from where our leaders are chosen, it still does not excuse bad leadership. To say that leaders cannot be different because they are from a rotten society begs the true definition of leadership, and I agree. So we should remember that when we collect money for a job or road construction and refuse to execute the job, which eventually leads to the death of innocent people, or a civil servant, you collect kickback and over invoice contract paper, thereby making it impossible to execute other job, you are worse than SARS. As a politician, be you senator, honorable or honorable members, president, governor, or chairman, or councillor, and your salaries are allowances at 100 times more than that of the people you represent, yes, you still circumvent the process to enable you steal from public posts. Then there's no difference between you and the gun trotting SARS. As a lawyer or judge, when you collect money to trade off judgments and grant electoral victory to someone rejected at the pool and make someone who didn't participate in the election process become a governor, president, senator, or even lawmaker, and he eventually takes decisions that will affect thousands of people, there's no hiding place from it, you are SARS. An employer who uses staffs like slaves and still refuse to pay them their salary as at when due is worse than SARS. A lecturer or employer who requests for sex or money in return for marks or employment is definitely not different from SARS, even though he's not carrying a gun. A police IG or commissioner who receives police budgets and fix it in an interest yielding account while collecting the interest during upfront, yet the rank and file under him or her are left to suffer is the true meaning of SARS itself. A medical doctor who, after swearing to the Hippocratic oath, still watches people die carelessly while insisting on payment of bills before treatment is a practicing SARS member. As a regulator or custom officer, immigration, government department, ministries, agencies, ICPC, EFCC, civil defense, ETC, and you use your job to oppress, harass, and intimidate people, if someone calls you as SAS, answer him, because that's your name, that's what you are. People work tirelessly for 35 years in government, and they have to die by installment before you pay them pension. Why SAS kills 10 with their pen or inaction, you kill hundreds with your actions. As a supporter of politicians, you criticize everything government did while in opposition, only to support everything you once criticized once your candidate is in government or vice versa. In fact, you are SARS personified. You are a religious cleric, flying private jets everywhere while your congregation are smelling of poverty. SARS is the full meaning of your church or mosque. Finally, you that increase tariff in the midst of a pandemic is worse than SARS. The list is endless. I would therefore advocate that as we protest for a better policing and society, we must also remember that our workers, politicians, lecturers, civil servants, judges, lawyers, doctors, police are drawn from amongst us. And it is those little injustice that we failed or neglect to address years ago that became the convention that we are addressing now. Let us start anew and with a new orientation and a new social order. That social reorientation can begin when we reduce the salaries and allowances of our public office holders and cost cut wastages. 
we would have enough funds to plow into other sectors of the economy. If government treats everyone as a stakeholder in the Nigerian project, and we collectively see ourselves as such, and all do our little bit, whether anybody's watching or not, we would have reduced the SARS in our life without having to change the name from SARS to SWATS. Let's all refuse to be SARS in others' lives. Mm, yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. I mean, um, I'd um, love it. Yes. Um, the Minister of uh, Information, that's uh, Lai Mohammed, wants to spend $500 million, I think, on NTA. Yes. yes. To that's make it the, CNN. That's SARS. Yes. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is going to happen in NTA, and the 500 million would have been used where people are going to die. So he's murdering people by trying to get a cushy contract for his ministry, uh, that parastatal in particular. That's what it's all about. about. That's, what, that's yeah. what is going on. You know what I want to say from what you just you know, talked about is that part where you said it's those little injustices that we failed or neglected to address years ago that became the convention of today that we are addressing now. Let's all start anew. That's no. what we're asking for, yes. with a new orientation. Yeah. It's not enough to end SARS and start SWAT no. without visiting the, the mistakes of oh, SARS. 60 years. You know, 60 years of the wrong kind of orientation yes. and culture within the police force, yeah. which we are even advocating for today to yeah. become police services. So they know that they're serving the people. Yeah. They should not brutalize the people they're serving. They're also leaders. They're to protect us. Do you know what I fear most in Nigeria as a citizen? Is somebody in that black uniform, the police. Once I see them, I'm Hearts. like, hey. Why, why should you be scared? Because they can't do anything. <laughs> you, you can't predict yeah, them. It's, 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 it's a very unfortunate situation. Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. predict them. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Um, so, so when you are going around with 22 cars blowing siren, you are a SARS. Yes. Um, when you are giving money to fight Boko Haram, to fight insurgents, and um, your soldiers are complaining that in a day they've changed 260 tires of high lux, um, SU, um, um, what do you call it, trucks, okay. and you are, you are saying they should deploy them or they should sack them, you are a SARS as army chief. Yes. When they say EFCC go after, do you, know, do, you know, do you know the irony of this thing in Nigeria? Somebody steals food in the market because he's hungry, you sentence him to 10 years. You are a SAS. But somebody steals billion and you said he should slap on the wrist. Should, yeah, you, yeah, and the person is still blowing You negotiate. You are, you are a SAS. You are, if you are a SARS, SWAT, SWAT. All of it. And all of it. <laughs> Join together. I, 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 Join. I was accidentally SWAT. called uh, 911. I was on the US. It was accidentally. And then somebody picked it and said, oh, how may I help you? You know, and I said, oh, I'm sorry. It was, it was an accident. It dropped. After about five minutes, he oh, called me in the back yes. and said, is everything OK? Mm -hmm. I said, is everything yeah. OK? And that, I, it was a genuine accident. I didn't mean to call. Yes. After about 10 minutes, there was a police truck yes. outside my house. Yes. Just in case you are under It came fear. to fear. check whether I was indeed all right or I was under some... That is yes. what I call service. Yes. Service. So if we're going to do something, we must retool from... The, we must start from the foundation and rebuild a proper police force, as right. well as institutions generally in Nigeria. Yeah, you, you see... Um, Sorry, I'm not supposed to say anything here, but I just want to narrate an experience. At the airport in the UK, a policeman stopped me. Mind if I ask you a few questions? That was the first time a police abroad was, you know. <laughs> initially, I, I thought it's the usual police here. Mind if I ask you a few questions? I said, and he took me to a corner with a piece of paper he was writing, and then the next thing he asked me, you have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? I was like, ah, police, they ask me. Since when? Since <laughs> when? And I said, well, you know, after the interrogation, they kept me for like two hours. Wow. And there was a mistaken identity, actually. And then somebody used my name to apply for a passport, for a visa that was refused, but not the same date of birth. Mm -hmm. Right there and then before me, the documents of that person where we, I was looking at them, and they checked. Use, even though they knew it wasn't Being me, assassin. they no. used computers to match the nose, the uh -huh. ear, and then they apologized and promised to go drop me off. I said, no, please, I don't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me a voucher. <laughs> they gave me a card that I can withdraw money from ATM for my inconveniences. Yeah. You know, here. 
Leave matter. Like I always say, uh, well, it's time to finally draw the curtain on this week's episode of The Advocate. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platform. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. And on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, just simply go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Hashtag N SARS now. 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 N SARS. Hashtag N SARS now. Right. Hashtag N Anger. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.